Hi, hello, welcome back. Today, so excited to be here because I'm gonna be going over my summer book recommendations. And I'm gonna categorize all of my recommendations by the genre of the book. So of course, I'm gonna have romance because to me, romance is summer and there's gonna be a lot of romance book recommendations. Then I have a few fantasy recommendations and then also specifically a few YA mystery thriller recommendations because for some reason that also screams summer to me. But without further ado, I'm just gonna jump right into the recommendation. If you know me, then you know I am the biggest Emily Henry fan, so I cannot start this recommendation video without mentioning all of her contemporary romance reads. I've read every single one of these books and I feel like every single one is the perfect summer read. If you haven't read any of Emily Henry books, then I recommend you go in order of publication date. So you would start with Beach Read. This one came out a couple of years ago and it definitely had its hype on BookTok, BookTube, Bookstagram, wherever you name it, this book was there. You didn't already know this follows January and January is trying to navigate the loss of her father and in order to do so she moves into his secret beach house that he had with his mistress. And of course while she is staying at this beach house she comes to find out that her neighbor Gus is her academic rival in college. You see both January and Gus are writers but but they write different types of books. Gus leans more into literary fiction. January writes more contemporary romance reads. Essentially, strike a deal. They're gonna switch the type of genres that they write in order to get out of their creative ruts. I feel like the premise of the book doesn't really do it justice, but I love this book so much. Of course, there's good banter, there's a good romance, and with every Emily Henry book, she also goes a step further a step deeper and there's a lot of discussion around grief and family as well. While on the beaches of Lake Michigan. Next you should read People Who Need On Vacation, of course by Emily Henry. This is a friends to lovers romance that follows a decades long timeline. It also alternates between the past and present timeline as well. It follows the main character Poppy and her relationship or friendship with Alex. And every year they would take a vacation together to a new spot until one vacation, everything goes wrong and it ends in the demise of their friendship. Now, a couple years after that point, Poppy decides that she wants to take one last vacation with Alex. And this book, of course, is a perfect summer read. You get to go to all these different vacation spots through the perspective of Poppy and Alex. And of course, there's romance, there's banter, it's a good time. Then you should read Book Lovers, also Emily Henry. But this follows Nora and she is a literary agent, but she's also described as a shark. So essentially she's just very ambitious and a go-getter in her industry. And because of that, she ends up in a small, cute town for the summer. And of course, while she's there, she runs into, I guess, her workplace industry rival, Charlie. This one definitely has the most amount of banter between Charlie and Nora just because they are these industry rivals and just based on their personalities alone I feel like it leads to a lot of banter. This one is definitely cute. It's like a Hallmark movie but in the best way possible and who doesn't want a small town read for the summer. Then my personal favorite is Happy Place. This is a second chance romance. It is also centered around a big friend group too but it follows the main characters Harriet and Wynne, and Harriet and Wynne have been a couple since college, and after college they do break up, but their friend group always takes this big summer vacation to Maine at a vacation home, and Harriet and Wynne have not broken the news to their friends that they have broken up, so when they are both invited to their friend's vacation, 
they decide that they're gonna pretend to still be dating. This is another perfect summer read. It takes place in Maine and you will fall in love with Maine. I never thought I would be saying that out loud. But somehow every place that Emily Henry writes about, she just makes it seem so magical and wonderful. And her most recent release, which I also loved, is Funny Story. Funny Story is about a funny story, I guess. It follows the main character, Daphne, and it starts off with her explaining her relationship with her fiancé, Peter, and then also how Peter ended their relationship to get together with another woman. <laughs> So because Daphne lives at Peter's home, she has to find a new place and she moves in to an apartment that has a roommate. And of course, the roommate is the ex of the woman that got together with Peter. Does that make sense? This book is also the perfect summer read. You go along with Daphne and Miles and the relationship while they do all these good, fun summer activities around Michigan. Once again, never thought I would want to go to Michigan, but Emily Henry convinces me that I need to spend a summer vacation in Michigan. But I love this one so much. A perfect summer read. Changing gears just a little bit, but still in the romance category. It's better than the movies by Lynn Painter. This is a YA romance. It is very cute. It's very wholesome. It follows the main characters Liz and Wes, and they're in high school. And essentially, they're these enemies, but not really enemies. You know the drill. But this book is just so cute and wholesome. Every chapter starts off with a quote from a rom-com from the 90s or the early 2000s. So really the best decades of rom-com movies. But if you want something cute, short, fast to read, and it's a romance, definitely pick this one up. Another romance is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. This takes place in New York City during the summer, so really a perfect summer read. It follows the main character, August, as she takes a train every day because it's New York, and she sees this other girl on the train. Her name is Jane, and she starts to realize that Jane feels out of place and just really not with the times. And she discovers that Jane is actually stuck on the train and she is actually from the 70s. Feels like a perfect summer adventure with a group of friends and of course there's romance. If you want a romance that is also funny then definitely pick this one up. Another romance is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jacob Reads. While this is a romance, this probably leans more in the literary fiction side of it because it follows Daisy Jones and her rise to fame in the band Daisy Jones and the Six. They were popular in the late 60s, early 70s, and even though they were a fictional band, just like everything about them feels so real. This book is written in a podcast style, interview style format, so it's really easy to read. And I feel like it's the perfect quick read for the summer. Something about a 70s band just screams summer to me. I don't know. Switching back to YA romance, I have Love and Gelato by Jen Evans Welch. This is the perfect summer read because it takes place in Italy. So if you've been craving to travel to Italy, then definitely pick this one up. It's definitely a cute, wholesome YA read. It follows the main character, Lena, as she's spending her summer in Italy and just finding more about family, her mom, and biological dad. But this couldn't be complete without a summer Italian romance, which Lena definitely experiences in this book too. This one is another cute, wholesome, quick read, perfect for the summer. If you want a book that goes a little bit deeper, then you should definitely pick up The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. I read this this year. It was the first book I read this year and I loved it so much. It follows the main character Clementine and she lives in New York and it's set in the summer so you get those New York City summer vibes. Anyways, Clementine. She is navigating the loss of her aunt, her beloved aunt, and she moves into her aunt's apartment where she finds out all these stories that her aunt has been telling her about how magical the apartment is were actually true. 
because one day Clementine returns home from work, she walks through her apartment door, and she actually travels seven years in the past. And of course, when she travels seven years in the past, there's this handsome stranger man who is also staying at the apartment. But like I said, there's romance, there's banter, it's cute, but it's also heartbreaking and heart-wrenching all at the same time. And it definitely explores the concept of the right person but the wrong time. And I loved it so much. Another heartfelt read is Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. This is another friends to lovers book that follows a decades long timeline. And it also has a past and present timeline as well, but it follows the main characters Macy and Elliot. And Macy in the present time is currently in a relationship that she doesn't feel super happy and fulfilled by. And she ends up running into her old childhood lover, Elliot. And because of the alternating timelines, in the past timeline, you figure out how Macy and Elliot came together and ultimately why they broke up. And then in the present timeline, you see them work through all of their past experiences together. This is another book that is both cute and sad all at the same time. Another perfect summer read. For the next category, fantasy, I don't have very many books in this category. Honestly, it's hard to find fantasy books that feel summer to me personally. I feel like I read a lot of fall, winter fantasy books, but not a lot of summer fantasy books. But if you have any recommendations, please comment them down below. I would love to know. But without further ado, the first recommendation I have for fantasy is The Weight of Feathers. This is actually a Romeo and Juliet inspired retelling because it has rival families, but it's in a circus traveling performer setting. I don't know why, but something about circus and traveling performers just screams summer to me. This follows the main characters Lace and Cluck. Yes, I said Cluck, that is right. If you read the book, you kind of understand why their names are the way that they are, and their families are rival travel performer families. <laughs> so they inherently don't like each other because of their families until one day they meet and experience something together and then they realize, hey, maybe this other person isn't as bad as I thought they were. Anyways, I love this book a lot. I don't really hear anyone talk about it. I feel like you should pick it up if you're interested in it and support the author. So the last fantasy recommendation I have is actually a series and this one I'm kind of debating on if it's a summer fantasy read but hear me out. The Cruel Prince trilogy by Holly Black and the reason why I'm putting it in my summer book recommendation list is because it's about fairies or fae and and just like the magic system in this book is very nature based and whimsical and I don't know why that just screams summer or spring to me. And these are considered to be enemies to lovers but more on enemies and less on lovers. A lot of people say that these books are political heavy which yes they kind of are but I felt like Holly Black could have done more on that side in my opinion. But the politics in this book are fun politics. They're all about schemes and bargains and deals, so it's super fun and exciting to read about. I love this series overall. I feel like everyone should read it if you get the chance to. Now on to my oddly specific category, which is YA mystery thrillers. Something about teens solving crime just screams summer to me. Let me know if you agree with that statement. The first series that I'm going to talk about is of course A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series by Holly Jackson and I think the show for this series is coming out soon so what a better time than to read this series and also watch the show this summer. But like I alluded to, this series follows the main character Pip. She's a teenager, she's in high school, and she solves crime. The first book is about Pip essentially trying to solve a cold case murder that happened in her town. 
basically her whole town has villainized this one boy as being the culprit of the murder. However, it was never technically solved and that just never sit right with Pip. So she decides for her senior project that she's going to take on this case and set things right. But this book in the series overall is so interesting. You feel like you are on the case with Pip and solving it right alongside with her, especially the first one because you get all of her notes while she is trying to solve the mystery. It's, so it's a very interesting and engaging read because of that. But I love the series overall. Definitely pick it up if you haven't read it yet. Another teen solving crime series is the Natural series by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I love this series so much. It's essentially like Criminal Minds but with teenagers. The first book, The Naturals, it follows the main character Cassie and she is recruited into this FBI teen program called The Naturals. And essentially every teen that is part of this program has some sort of natural ability that makes them better at solving crime. So for example, Cassie is just really good at reading people. So the team wants her to solve their cold cases. But of course, they're not just solving cold cases because there is an active case that is happening and Cassie finds herself right in the middle of it. This series and just Jennifer Lynn Bard's writing style in general, they're all very fast paced reads. They all have short chapters and the chapters kind of end on like a mini cliffhanger that makes you want to keep on reading and finding out what's going to happen next. But anyways, that wraps up all of my summer book recommendations. I hope I gave you some new recommendations that of books that you haven't read yet. And of course, if you have any summer book recommendations, please let me know what they are. I would love to know them. If you want to follow me elsewhere, I'm also on TikTok. I'm also on Goodreads. I'm also on Instagram. The same account name, at MaddieReed6. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, see you later. Bye.